Hello there, and welcome back to Absolute Web Development Beginners. And in the last lesson, I sent you guys a mock-up in the post and said, you know, hey, this is what we're going to do in the next lesson. We're going to have um, take the mock-up and make it look like a website. So how do we start something like this that's just basically, it's a graphic, okay? And then you turn it into a website, you know, like this, okay? To where it's actually functioning and it's, you know, doing stuff that oh, it needs to do. Well, that's what we're going to be talking about today. And I'm going to walk through the whole thing with you so we all have a good understanding of, of, of how it's done and how you do this. So let me go ahead and we'll dive right in and I'll put this off to the side. We'll keep referring to our mock-up because I'm going to show you some tricks that you can use to get like colors and, and uh, uh, different things like that uh, whenever you're designing uh, a web page for your client. If you right click on the desktop, hit new document, uh, and I'm going to have the empty document. If you're on Windows, it'll be, you know, just a new uh, .txt file, save it, in, save it in UTF-8 encoding. And a Mac, it would be text edit, but we're going to call this index.html once again to get us started. Right click, I'm going to open with gedit, and uh, let me bring that over here. And the next thing that we're going to do is double click on this so it fires up the, the Chrome browser. And this is our blank page. So let's start off with our bare bones HTML document, shall we? Just like so. And we'll go right inside here. Type our head and our body. All right, right back to bare bones HTML. And let's go ahead and go inside the head tag and give us a title. And this title will be, oh, my first programming website. Okay. Now we're just going to do the basics, you know, but this is going to be enough to get you started. And uh, that's what we want to, to start doing. We're going to continually refer back to that uh, table and uh, or back to the graphic. And we're going to lay some things out. Okay. So uh, I'll be popping up this graphic every once in a while to look at it. And if we look at it right now, you can see there's this red band going across the top with a graphic in the center. Um, we, uh, the, the, client wants this to stay in the same position you know doesn't want it to go up and down with the page just have it in a fixed position then we have uh, you notice this is a, an h1 tag and it's bold um, we have this first paragraph the first paragraph is bold but the other paragraphs are not bold we also see that the headings are in the center along with that image up there it's in the center okay so we need to start thinking about structuring the html first and this particular top right here, we could call this um, um, maybe the header. Okay. So uh, I think the first thing we want to do is encase everything in a main div. Okay. So let's go open it up and let's call it, start out with div ID equals main, just like that. And then we'll close out that div. Make sure we include our quotation marks. Okay, and this is going to give us some... Uh, we see on this picture there's some padding over here. There's some padding over here. It looks like uh, the main thing is pushed over to the left a little bit. So, we're, But we're going to have a div ID of main to encompass everything. And then we'll probably have a div for this up here, a div for the sidebar, a div for the main body. Okay, so this is like the uh, the main div, which that everything's going to go in. So we'll start off with that. Um, I noticed uh, this. I think this was a mistake. This is just a uh, color input, but we're just we'll go ahead and throw that in there. And you guys remember that when we were doing the forms. Okay, so let's go ahead and. Uh, create our next div. Uh, the next div, I think, would be this, we call it like a header div. So, 
You know what we'll do? We'll, we'll give it a uh, class. In fact, let's give this a class of main. Classes are nice because if you had another class you need to add, you can do it. So let's make one for this, this red bar in this graphic. We'll do that one first, all right? Div class equals header. All right. And let's close out that div so we don't forget. And so now we have this div inside the div of main. Okay. And uh, so an inside header, we have a graphic, don't we? We have that little A graphic. So what we want to do is we want to grab that A graphic. In fact, I took some uh, preliminary measures uh, here and I'll show you the graphic that we have. It's already in the same folder. So let me go ahead and minus this down here. Put this down. And see the graphic logo 200? So that's the graphic that we're going to be using. I'm going to put this, I'm going to minus this down. So we want to get that across this header. So we say image src. Now since equals and then the quotes, since we're already in the same folder, we're in the desktop folder, all we have to do is get the name of that image, which, which would be logo200.png. Logo200.png. And then, uh, you know, we'll do, we'll close that out. But let's give this an ID, though. Remember, we want to give things IDs and get make sure that we do that. We'll give it an ID of logo. All right. Now, let's save this right now and bring up our, uh, bring up our uh, Chrome. Let me see here. I'm getting lost. Okay, we'll double click on this. And this is what we have. So this is what we have right now. Okay. So now let's full screen this. So we'll keep everything nice and big. And I'll just click over here for my, whenever I want to bring up my code, whenever I want to bring up the graphic, and when I want to bring up the site. Okay. So <clears throat> we notice that this particular graphic is to the left at the top. But if we look at the graphic, you know, it's toward the center. Let me go ahead and full screen that graphic. That's right in the center. So you know, there's there's a couple different ways that we can handle it, but the best way is with that div ID, right? So let's go ahead up here into the head, and we'll start out, uh, you know, like we did last time. We want to make it create a style sheet, and so it starts with link, and the relationship equals S T Y L E S H E E T, and then the H R E F equals. S-T-Y-L-E dot C-S-S. Okay, and we still have to create that file. So we, we haven't created it yet. So let's go ahead and copy this right here. Copy. And for my, uh, for my desktop, I think I'm just going to create it right in here. So I'm going to create a new document, empty document, and it's going to be called style.css. Okay. There we go. And then we're going to bring it up. Let me open it up here. I want to open it in the same window as this one. So I'm going to click open. I'm going to come down here to style.css. And now we're ready to go. See, it's pulling it in. Now we're, we're looking at this uh, logo of the ID of logo. So in our style sheet, when we target an ID, it's pound logo, open and close curly brackets. And uh, here we, we want to do a couple things. We want to tab in and we want to say display a block. And let's give it a width. If we look and see actually how wide that picture is, and let me go ahead and bring it up here in our folder. Everything keeps going over here. There we go. If we go ahead and open this up, we can open it with um, any kind of picture tool. But I'm going to open it up with GIMP. And that will help me get the sizes of that graphic. So I got it right here. If I go up to Image and um, Scale Image, I can see that the width is... 639 by 476. So if I stick with the width of 639 pixels, I'll be good. So I'm click cancel here. 
that was just to give me my my size. So width is 639 pixels. All right. Now I want to get it to center. In order to get an image to center, we could say margin. And then the top and bottom will just set to zero. But for the left and right, A-U-T-O, we're just going to be put auto. So when you're using margins and you only have two uh, entries here, the first one is top and bottom. The second one is uh, left and right. Now, if you put four, we could do this. We could put zero, then auto again. And that does the exact same thing. That'll center the image. But we're just going to do it like this. And I'm going to go ahead and save that. We'll bring it up and refresh, and now we have it in the center. But look, it's a little bit too big, isn't it? Okay, so let's go ahead and look at our graphic. And it only looks to me like it's maybe it's 100 pixels across. So let's go ahead and resize that. I tell you what, let's make it 200 pixels. And we'll hit refresh. All right, very good. Okay, and that's in the uh, div class of header inside there now you'll notice uh whenever we look when we look at the graphic it has kind of like this gradient maroon thing uh, and if we uh bring a, if we actually bring this up in gimp we can actually get the colors and gimp is a free program if you if you want to learn more about gimp i have a bunch of tutorials on it at a1 website pro but i'm just going to go to file and click open we're going to open that mock-up we're going to open the mock-up in GIMP here so we can actually get some p colors, okay? So if I go to the eyedropper color and I click on the very top of this, you see how it gave me that color? The colors will change as I click on the different things. Well, if I click on this color here and I click on this box, it's going to bring up the color the HTML notation. See that? And that's the color that I want to give the background of header. Okay. So let's go back to our CSS and we're targeting header now. And it's the class of header. So we're going to start out with a period header. Let's go inside here. Tab over. Background color. So my colon, and then pound, and we put that in there. That's how you do a color notation in CSS. So let me go ahead and save that, and uh, let's refresh here. Oh, there we go. We got our we got our little red box there that we needed. Okay. Okay. Now you remember uh, whenever I was talking about uh, the different browsers have different default variables set in them, right? Well. Here you can see, if you look at the graphic, there's no whiteness. I mean, the black is just part of my uh, my image viewer, but this is the way it looks. There's there's no white on the the, the sides of the uh, um, the red here. Okay, it, but if you look at our in our Chrome, we could see that it you know we have a line up here, we have a line over here. Well, what we want to do with that is we right-click, we try to find out what the culprit is, okay? So if we go to, down here to body, you can see that there's a margin of 8 pixels. So just to test it out, we can test it out here. Margin, let's put margin of 0, and we see that that corrects the problem. So what we want to do is go to our style sheet, and we just want to target body, okay? Just top target the body element. And then we're going to go right in here, tab over, type margin zero, just like that. Okay, now let's go back to our page and refresh it. Now we can see that we have, you know, we don't have any margins in there like before. All right, so let's go ahead and scroll down and look at our picture again. Uh, we can see that there is a... Um, a main part here with the sidebar. It looks like this is taken up. I don't know. Oh, also, if you notice in the uh, paragraph, the first part is indented. Uh, there, we're going to need to get some uh, text, you know, some Lauren Ebsom text. And I actually already got some. And I'll give it to you in the code. But uh, let's go ahead and start with uh, the H1 tag. Uh, we, if we look at our div class, 
uh, after header, we're going to have to have another class. And let's give this a class of, uh, uh, let's say, div. All right, let's give it a div class equals article, like that. And let's go ahead and close out that div so we don't forget. And uh, we'll go inside here, and uh, the first thing that we'll do is give it an h1 tag. And uh, copy out that h1, an h1 tag. And I'm going to copy this right here, my first programming website. And we're going to paste that right in there. The next thing that we're going to have to do is the uh, Lauren Ipsum text. Okay. Some dummy text that we can shoot in there in that P tag. And I'm going to grab it right now. We'll just copy. I'm just going to paste text in here. Paste. All right. And then if we save that... Um, Let's look at the graphic here. If we look at the graphic, we can see that they have, uh, you know, the first one, set heading two, heading three. So let's go ahead and do that while we're in here. So, and then the next one needs to be an H2 tag, of course, because you can only have H1 tags in there, only one H1 tag. We'll call this heading two, and then we'll just copy this paragraph dummy text paste it in there and let's just go ahead and grab this entire thing one more time for heading three and we'll change that to heading three let's go ahead and save it and check it out in the browser if we refresh okay now we're starting to see you know uh, we're getting somewhere um, it, let's go ahead and look at the graphic you, you see we have a bunch of padding over here we have some padding on the top um, the the paragraphs are indented there. So just uh, just judging by looking at this, it looks like it's a width of sixty percent on the div class of articles. So let's go here to our style sheet and begin our div class of article a r t i c l e. Open and close curly brackets, and we want to make the width sixty percent because we know the sidebar the sidebar that we're going to need is going to be probably roughly you know 20 percent so we're going to give that a width of 60 percent let me go ahead and tab that in so it looks neat and orderly and we remember there was padding so let's go to some padding we'll say padding uh two percent and ten percent now this is the top and bottom this is the left and right. And uh, let's go ahead and save that and take a look at our progress. All right, so we're starting to look a little bit more like the graphic here. Okay. And uh, we'll, we notice that the paragraphs are indented here. So we've got to pay attention to that kind of detail. So let's go ahead and indent the paragraphs. Uh, the other thing I notice is they have a little bit of line height and it doesn't look like the text are as close together because if we look at what we got here, it looks like the text are real close together. Um, this one looks easier to read because the text has some space in it. So let's go ahead and take care of all that. And that would be in the... Uh, uh, also, the fonts look larger as well. So let's go ahead and target our paragraph tags. And let's go in here... We'll say font size large, okay, and uh, letter spacing. Let's go with three pixels. Um, let's look at the uh, the the first paragraph. Uh, the the first line was indented, so that's text indent. And I will I believe it's indented like 40 pixels. Let's go to the next line and let's give it some line height. And we're just going to say 44 pixels on that. Okay. And let's go ahead and save that. Bring it up in our browser here and refresh. 
And uh, we're starting to look a little bit more. Let me make sure I'm only at 100%. Yes, very good. So we got have a little bit of line height. Um, looks like the, they're spaced out a little bit better, so it's getting a little bit easier to read. Um, let's go ahead and look at our graphic again. You notice the very first paragraph is totally bold. So how would we do that in CSS? Well, we can use something called first of type. So here at the, at the P, we're targeting the paragraphs. We're going to make another line. and It's still a paragraph, too, but it's the first paragraph. So we'll say first of type, just like that. And uh, first of type. There we go. And let's just tab it in there. And we'll say uh, font weight is bold. Okay. And uh, let's go ahead and save that and refresh it in our browser. Now we see that the first one is bold. Uh, the, the other ones are not. Uh, there's something else a little bit different about that. If we look at the uh, graphic here, we could see that the font is a different font, okay? And uh, there's different ways that we, we can ha handle this, but I know this is a Roberto font. So what I would want to do is go to uh, Google Fonts, and let me show you how to do this because it's real easy. Google Fonts, and you type that, put that in your search engine. Just bring the, go to Google Fonts and let it load up here. And in the search right here, you want to type in Roberto, R-O-B-E-R-T-O. -E okay, and there it is. And that's our font. That's the one that we want to use. So see this little plus thing? We'll just hit that little plus. And when you're ready, you want to just grab this little link right down here. We'll copy that. Go to our code. And in the index.html in the head, what we're going to do is right after the title tag, we're going to paste in this little style sheet of font. Okay, and the next thing we're going to do is go back to Google and see this where it says font family, Roberto. This is how we could change the fonts in our uh, website. So if we go to the style sheet, let's target the, uh, I'll tell you what, let's just target the everything here. Um, put it in the, uh, I'll tell you, we'll put it in the body. How about that? Put it in the body, font family. Roberto Sans Serif, and then we'll end it out there. So let's save that, and cut. We, we don't need no longer need Google Fonts. Let me refresh the page. There we go. Now we're starting to look a, a little bit more and more like our heading, okay, or like our graphic. Now we do notice we got this little color selector up here. So you guys remember when we were doing that, right? It's so if we go, we know that it's underneath the header, but it's like in the article somewhere, possibly in, in the article. That's, uh, let me uh, think here for just a second. If we go right here, input type equals color. And I believe that was it. Let's give it an ID of COL. Or for color and we'll go ahead and save that and let's reload that in our browser and there we go now we have that little mark that was in there probably by mistake but we still have it in there we know what to do if it needs to take it out and uh, if we scroll down we can see this page is you know starting to come along okay the the other thing now is this has a sidebar Okay, and there's a little menu in it. So why don't we go down in our code? Let's go sc scroll clear down to the bottom because if the sidebar was going to appear on the left of the page, we would want the sidebar up here. But since the sidebar is appearing to the right of the div class of article, then we want it right after the div class of article, but still in the main div. Okay, so here's the main div, and then here's the article div. In the main, we have first we have their header, but we closed it out, put the graphic, put that pretty red in there. 
Uh, the next is the div class of article. So we want to go right after this div. Now, there's no other divs in here. So this is the closing div for article. So we're going to have a div class of sidebar. Okay, that's S-I-D-E-B-A-R. S-I-D-E-B-A-R. Oh. There we go. All right, now inside the sidebar, remember when we were talking about ordered lists and unordered lists? This is where this is going to come in handy for you. So we're going to do an unordered list, and let's give it an ID of equals menu. Menu. All right, and then let's close out that unordered list, just like that. And let's go inside, and what do we put inside these? List items, that's right, you're exactly correct. List items. So let's go ahead and do this, li, and these are going to be links. We don't know what they are yet, but uh, we want to make them links. So a h r e e f, h r e f equals, and then whenever you don't have a link in there, you could just put a pound sign, and then we'll say uh, maybe this is going to go to the top of the page. Okay, so let's do that. In fact, that's what's, in, well, that's what's in our graphic right here. Top first paragraph, second paragraph, and third paragraph. So these are linked to those paragraphs there. So let's go ahead and, uh, you know what, maybe we'll target a div ID of top here. Okay? And let's just go ahead and highlight that entire line, and we'll paste the next one in. The next one will be first paragraph. Okay. And we'll just call this first P, F-I-R-S-T-P. And let's go ahead and drop down another line, paste in, and then we're going to be targeting the second paragraph. And we'll just say here, S-E-C-O-N-D-P, okay? And let's go ahead and make another one, copy, paste, and this will be third. And let's do this, T-H-I-R-D, okay? So that will target the third paragraph. Now, if we save that and we refresh it in our browser, you're gonna notice that, hey, it's way down here, and you got them bullets on there, and it doesn't look anything like the mock-up with that square thing over there. So how are we gonna handle this? Oh, well, of course, we're gonna handle it in CSS. Okay, so if we bring this up here, we'll just go ahead and save this. Notice we have a div class of sidebar. Maybe we'll just make it an ID. ID of sidebar? Yeah, that sounds good. All right, now let's go ahead and go to our style.css. Now we're targeting, what, the sidebar, but not just the sidebar. We want to get rid of the these, uh, well, let's bring it up here. We want to get rid of these bullets. Okay, so how, how do we do that? Well, we target the sidebar and the list items in the sidebar. Okay, so that's how you can target something within something. Like in the div of sidebar, if there's any list items, I want you to do this to them. Okay, and so it's the list style, and we'll just put none on it like that here. We'll go ahead and save that and bring it up here. We'll refresh and now notice that the bullets disappear. Okay. Now we can also see that they're all underlined. Okay. How do we get rid of the underlines? Well, we actually have to target the anchor. Okay. So we could, let me go ahead and put this like this so we can see what we're doing. Let's get target sidebar again. Okay. L-I-A. So here we're targeting the sidebar, the list items in the sidebar, but anything that is a link, okay? And we'll just open and close the curly brackets like that there. Drop inside here, tab over, and I'm going to type in text, D-E-C-O-R-A-T-O-N, decoration, and we're just going to say none. And that'll get rid of the nasty underlines that we have in there. There we go. And now you can see that they are now gone. Okay, so something else about our uh, 
mock up here. We notice that this is over off to the right up here, and the and the client wants it, it, it in a p fixed position. So how are we going to handle this? Well, once again, CSS to the rescue. So what we're going to do is we're going to target our menu div. All right div ID of menu, M-E-N-U, and let me open and close those. And if we look at our index.html, that's the unordered list, the ID is menu. So these that's why these things help you out so much because you know you can target them any time that you want. And uh, let's go ahead and drop down here and they want that as a position of fixed. Okay, now let me just go ahead and save that and we'll bring it up in our browser here and I'll refresh it. And what that does is puts it in one fixed position. If it disappears like this, you know, there's no need to be alarmed. All you would have to do is take that position of fixed off of there and you could find out where it is very easily just by hitting refresh. But we know it's at the bottom of the screen, you know. And so let's go ahead and uh, put the position of fix back in. I'm going to show you how to handle this. If you want it to go from the top, say, let's say, call it from the top 30%. That means it's going to be 30% down the top of the page. And let's go ahead and refresh this. And now you can see that it's 30% down at the top of the page. And now when I'm scrolling it, you can see, see that it stays in a fixed position. Okay, uh, but we want this over here. How do we handle that? Well, we could do a float right. Okay, F L O A T R I G H T, save. And let me go ahead and refresh, and nothing happened. Why? Okay, let's take a look at this. Look at the index.html, it's in a div ID of sidebar. Well, where's that sidebar at? Is the sidebar floating right? How wide is the sidebar? Well, we know that the, if you don't have any width on, it's probably 100%. Okay, so let's go ahead and work with the sidebar. Right, and we're going to put that right beside the menu. Let's go pound sidebar. Now, we're not targeting anything in the sidebar like we're here. We're just going to target the entire sidebar. And let's go inside here. And let's give this uh, a width of 20%, okay? And let's have it float right. And we'll display it as a block. D-I-S-B-L-A-Y, B-L-O-C-K, all right? Let's go ahead and refresh the page. Now we can see we're starting to get somewhere. We're, we got the uh, menu off to the right. And if we look at our graphic, once again, we're starting to get a little bit closer to where we need to be. Okay. So there's a couple other things, though, that that menu has in it uh, that we're going to have to include in here. And if we look at our graphic, we can see it has that gray background color. So once again, if we open up our GIMP, go to our ink dropper tool, click on that, grab that little gray, and then you could grab that CSS copy. This is also in Photoshop too, but GIMP is a free program. Anybody can download it and use it, so that's why I'm using GIMP. So let's go ahead and type in here background color and then we'll put a pound sign. Put that in there just like that. And let's go ahead and refresh. Ah, we're getting a little bit closer, right? Now we have the black background. But if we look at if we look at our graphic and we look, we could see that there's kind of like a maroon border. Okay. So let's go to GIMP and grab that. Uh, we'll zoom in on this, and uh, let's go ahead and grab that. Uh, color we're looking for there. It looks like the same color at the top, but we're just going to copy that. And we're going to give this a border. Well, let's see here. Tab it in there. And let's say two picks, and it's going to be a solid color. And then we'll put the color in and then terminate that. So this is the thickness of the border. This is the 
the kind of border you want. You can have solid, dotted, or whatever, grooved. But we're, they just want solid. And then this would be that the color, whatever the color is. So let's go ahead and save that. And, and when we save it, you're going to notice that you see that border on there now. But uh, if we look at our uh, mock-up, we have some padding, and we notice that the text is white. Okay, so how are we going to handle that? Well, let's go back to our menu, and let's give this some padding. I would say about 55 pixels, P-A-D-D-I-N-G, 55 P-X. And uh, let's go ahead and give that border three pixels. It looked a little chintzy to me. And, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and save that and refresh it all right now we got to take care of that color because the you know in the mock-up we could see that the color is white but in our rendition of that mock-up it's purple so let's go ahead and go to our css once again and remember when i said you want to target anchor links you want to target them with that a Okay, so let's go ahead and this time we could do the sidebar thing, but this time I'm going to show you we could just go right into the menu div. So let's go pound menu li a and let's go inside this little thing and we'll say color. Now we could put type white, but the color for white and CSS is pound fff as well. You could use either one, it's fine. I'm just so used to using pound fff. Sometimes that's how I spell my colors. All right, there we go. So now we have top, first paragraph, second paragraph, third paragraph. Third. All right, let's go ahead and fix that spelling. T-H-I-R-D. All right, there we go. Now, <clears throat> what happens whenever they click top? Well, we want them to go to the top of the page. And if they click first paragraph, we want them to go to the first paragraph, second second paragraph, third, third paragraph. So do you see this? We need to make a little ID at the top called top. So where can we do that? Where would be a great place to do that? Well, it would probably be in the div class of header or main. And so... If we go here to the div class of main, just type in ID equals, there you go, top. And we don't need that right there. Okay? So that whenever they click on the top, it'll jump to the top. So let's go ahead and refresh and make sure that's working good. So let's scroll down here and click on top. Voila, goes to the top. All right, so uh, now we have to say the first paragraph. We want to go to this particular paragraph here. So let us go down here and... Um, grab first P just like that we'll copy and let's go to the first paragraph right here let's give this an ID equals first P okay and let's go ahead and do um, the other ones too and in, in the H tags the heading tags go right here and then go right here there we go and then we have second P and then we have third P. All right. So we'll just go ahead and save that and uh, refresh this page. Now let's see if we go to first paragraph. There we go. Second paragraph. Third paragraph. First paragraph. Okay. And then to the top. So it's working. Now you'll notice when we get to the third paragraph, there's nothing at the bottom here. So it can't go any lower because there's no more content on the page. All right. All right, so let's go ahead and take a good close look. There's our uh, web functioning website, and um, here's the uh, thing. Now you notice the uh, it looks like the text is popping out of here a little bit more. It looks like this has a text shadow, and that maybe this has a text shadow. But let's go ahead and take care of the text shadow on the menu while we're in there. Um, and let me show you how to do this. And it looks like it's on the uh, met the menu items. So if we go type in text, S-H-A-D-O-W, and let's say one picks, two picks, three picks, and then we'll put pound zero, 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 which is black. And uh, I need to change these to picks, not PZ. Let's save that. And we'll go refresh. And now we have a popping out. You see the uh, text shadow on there? 
so and it looked like this first one had a text shadow but it doesn't look good on the on the mock-up i don't think so i'm just going to leave it off of there but we shoot this out to the client and uh you know say hey uh here is the website that you had me program for you and uh you know i did all this work and um just want to see if you like it you know if they approve of it then, then you go on if not make new changes then you make the changes i hope you enjoyed this short little tutorial on uh, you know designing a website with css and uh, i hope it was informative to you and that you learned some things don't hesitate to contact me uh, we're going to be uh, moving on to some javascript um after this so stay tuned for the next video and we'll start teaching you how to uh, manipulate the dom the document object model with uh, javascript so if you're interested in something like that please be sure to subscribe share with your friends anybody that's interested in getting into the web development world uh, share them uh, with uh, our website and our videos please thank you bye-bye